This is not a game. It's a difficult journey to acquire this knowledge. There's a lot at risk here and you have to take it very seriously. can be used for evil. All these people from all over are coming and congregating in the same place and you can't just be giving out this information and training any old person. You have to understand the character of the person and make sure that you're passing on this information to the right people. You need them to have honour respect, work ethic, these sort of virtues. You have to win at all costs because what makes my sport unique is when you lose, you've been hurt more. Okay, welcome, but we'll get into it soon. But I'll introduce some people. These are the guys that will coach with me. This is four hour Johnny and five hour Salvi because they, they alternate days. I teach Monday to Friday, they alternate Monday, Tuesday because uh, getting up this early is hard. <laughs> the One Try program takes absolute novices or beginners, people with no experience at all, from not knowing anything about the sport of MMA to having enough knowledge and enough skills to be able to then participate in an actual match 20 weeks later. So how this works is we teach you the fundamentals just like we'll teach any fighter and then we just work our way up until we're like doing flip kicks and jumping on our head and all the rest of it. You're taking on a group of people who are from such a diverse background. Some of them don't have an athletic background or a sporting background of any sort. Some of them haven't worked out in years. You guys can warm up up there. Hustle, hustle, right? Butt kicks, butt kicks. Face the mat, face the mat. Side shuffle. The reason I joined the Wimp to Warrior, I guess Eugene was definitely the deciding factor. Face the outside. I didn't think I was tough enough, and he said, that's the whole point, you know, it's wimp to warrior, you you come into this and there's people who haven't been doing anything like this before and, and, and they're ready by the time the 20 weeks are up. Okay, come down this end. We'll start with one, two down here. My name's uh, John Watson. 45 years old, I'm a multi-site general manager for, uh, I look after two restaurants out at the airport. Okay, get ready. Starting with half a burpee. Go! Probably, I would say, happened in 2020 during lockdown. Flip over! Get ready! Go! And then I sort of realised all I've been doing is work home, work home, and there was something that I needed, it was something that was missing. Come on, stay up there, stay up there. It's a short movement and then I saw this on Facebook and it talks about changing you from a wimp to a warrior physically but also with your mind as well and I thought yeah that sounds like a bit of me. So I'm going to put my hand here, this hand comes underneath and then I need to fit my other knee, bring that, bring your knee a bit closer to my hip. One of the interesting things about fighting, it can be such a strange thing for people to gravitate towards. So normally there's like something behind it and there's always a story there. Okay, now bring that knee under her armpit. Beautiful, beautiful. I really don't think it suits my personality to hit another human. Never done any boxing or... <laughs> okay, so this is what you want here. See this? Yeah. This hand straight is exactly what you want. For a couple of years I've been like watching the UFC with my mates on Sundays. I grew up doing a lot of dancing, mainly Irish dancing, which is like legs only, no arms, they're pretty useless. So way out of my comfort zone. What really motivated me to do this um, is that my dad passed away at Christmas. 
and I just thought for my own mental health I needed to do something physical, learn something new, get out of the house and just kind of break up the routine of my life. It was a, a tool to help me work through grief and just feel stronger, yeah. My family were originally very on board because I explained that I needed to do something physical to help with my mental well-being. And then I rang my mum before I signed up and I was like, mum, just letting you know I'm going to do mixed martial arts. And at the end there will be a fight. And she goes, oh, when I was 12 I did judo. And that's all she said. And I was like, mum, you were meant to stop me. <laughs> Speed this up. Holiday's over. Good. My name's Seamus Markety, age 28, and I work for Auckland Council as a drain layer. Stand up. Got 10 seconds. Stand up. Sprawl. Back up. Hands up. Hips down. Hands up. There was a little quote in the ad that, that really stood out to me. It was, get out of your comfort zone. Try something new. And here I am. OK, grab some space on the mat. I always had a love for martial arts, but uh, sort of fell by the wayside and then, you know, had a few novice things here and there, but then I saw this and, you know, found it pretty interesting and wanted to get into it. So after three kids later and putting on a whole heap of weight, we're, we're back in there. <laughs> I want to cut down on the weight and just Show my kids that, you know, anything's possible if you put your mind to it, you know? Yeah, it was hard. There's some really important movements, and we'll cover a few off now. This is called a uh, hip escape. You got your feet tucked up to your butt, you go to one side, and you're going to push away, and you're going to drive your butt back off your hip. Then he's gonna come back, bring his feet back up to his butt, and he's trying to go down the mat. Yeah. You're good. He's pushing away, pushing away, pushing away. Just to put this into context, I'm here. <coughs> John's gonna bridge and then tap his scale this way. See? See how he got away? This is probably the most important move you'll learn in terms of being on the ground. In martial arts, to advance and to get better at something, you have to continually repeat it. Yeah, yeah, keep rolling. Keep rolling through. This is going to last about 10 or 15 minutes. This is like learning to walk when you're like a, like a kid. It takes me back to when I first learned something that I didn't think was possible or achievable. I was like, wow, you know, like, you can quite easily get out from underneath this person if you do that and that, and that, like, kind of that, that state that you kind of like mind blowing for a little bit. Grab a partner. Okay, you will just start basic, okay? Just measure your distance. And then when you're ready, bum, bum, try and bridge the gap. Try and turn, turn the foot, and then come back. I'm Paneef David, two first names, kind of weird, but. I've always had a tough relationship with sports. Like growing up, I wasn't very athletic. I was a kid that gets picked last in the team. I think that's why fighting kind of draws me. It's like, it's just me. There's no team. I'm not letting anyone down. If I do good, I do good. If I do bad, I do bad. Just start walking around the mat this way. We'll keep moving, keep moving. Man, we're really fit. I'm surprised how fit we are. That's a, that's a joke. I'm a very busy person. I'm too busy. I have obviously a very busy gym uh, with a lot of fighters. Yeah, thanks, brother. But I also have two other businesses that I'm running at the moment. I supply uh, gear for a company called uh, Engage. I distribute gear for them in New Zealand. And I have a management company. Oh, yeah, he's booked in for his uh, COVID swap. No, he's booked down at 3.30 with Dr. Dave. We don't want to go through anyone else because we want to get the results back fast. 
I'm my own worst enemy because I'm a person that falls into the trap of thinking that no one else can do a better job than myself. <laughs> leading up to the junior firefight and leading up to my guys leaving for overseas was an incredibly busy month. Press conferences, meetings, fight nights, weigh-ins. It's become part and parcel of my life. But one thing I can say, with all these things happening externally, once I walk through the doors of the gym, everything goes away. It's our, our sanctuary of peace. And that's how it should be for everybody, I hope. Why would it not be? It's good that you watch, because you can still pick up stuff even though you can't train. I always tell people if they can't train, at least come and watch. So I've been practicing for a couple of weeks leading up to Wimp to Warrior, hoping that you know I could get my skills in and my, my grappling game down, and I end up with a, a really bad shoulder. It's really frustrating, because I just want to get on the ground and do this and hit the ground running, and, and obviously I can't. I just need to rest it. On Wednesday night, after like I just burst into tears, I was so angry and I was really just angry frustrated. Or in pain. Both. Oh. I normally get very emotional when I'm in pain, physical yeah. as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm gutted, honestly. Like it's so great to see everybody else going, and, and you know I'm so excited for them. But I'm not there with them, and it, it sucks. I was born and bred in West Auckland. I had a lot of pent up anger towards my family. My eldest sister was a, a little bit of a bully. Whenever she'd come around, I'd just tense up and, and you know, retreat inside myself. My lowest moment in my life was when I was 11. I had a... <laughs> a family member um, <laughs> sexually abused me and it kind of ruined me mentally. And I guess I didn't feel like I deserved anything better. I didn't think I wanted to fight at all and there's almost this nervous excitement now. But at the same time, it's to prove my own worth and how far I've come and to prove to myself, really, that I can do it. This and this, they kind of seem the same, but they're completely different. This is, a, this is an inch and a half too low. Got to bring it up, okay? This hand comes in front, just below the eye line again, and it's here. Like, don't put it here, okay, here. And then the last thing is, see my elbows? I don't want to do this. I want to tuck my elbows into my body, okay? Bend down. That's beautiful. Shoulder in front of my face, boom. Comes in front of my chin, yeah? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, roll your punch down. That'll give you your defense at the same time as your offense. From that end, yeah, one, two, down this end. Let's go. Well, the first week, uh, the body's pretty jacked up. Like, pains everywhere, like lower back, neck, everything, you know, because it's movements you've never done before on the ground and grappling. So, yeah, it's a big shock to the body, yeah. Keep your hands up, just below eye level. Everybody just start to concentrate on moving their feet a bit more. So, turning your feet. When you turn your body, it actually starts at your feet. But I always had a love for, for martial arts. I like it. Back in uh, 95, I think I was uh, still at college, and I had my first fight, and uh, that didn't go too well. <laughs> so I grew up in uh, a place called Ranui in West Auckland. I was about 
15, 16, I think it was. I was running from in a sort of part-time gym, and I went and signed up there and then started training. I was getting pretty fit pretty quick. He was asking everybody, like, who, who wants to fight? And uh, obviously I put my hand up, being young and young and dumb, you know, thinking, thinking I was the bad. And my first fight was against a guy called Chanel Federica. Um, yeah, really good fighter. I, I thought Chanel was a first-time fighter as well, you know? Like, I thought that's how it worked. Like, you, they match you off against someone who's got the same experience and everything like that, but... I didn't know that uh, Chanel Federica had fights already. Round one. And I remember walking out to the ring and I saw Chanel. And the size of his legs and his calves, I was like, mate, I already knew, you know? I already knew I was gonna get smoked that night. <laughs> Things can't go any worse than that. Good way to learn. <laughs> because of what happened in that first fight. I think you're always trying to better yourself all the time. Like, I wasn't happy with, with that loss. Like, I had friends and, and family, everyone there come to watch it and I got wasted, you know? It's like, you always want to do better. Fitness is not that great, so it's not like really taking a lot out of me. Definitely tough, like they're not taking it easy on us for a bunch of new guys. <laughs> Keep going, bums. Should be doing this around the house now. City kickboxing, obviously solid gym, you know, a lot of world-class fighters, so they're really going over the technique. And I was just like, yeah, go and do this combo. You kind of like, this is how you do a hip escape and you're doing that a hundred times. You know, by the end of it, I should be able to do it in my sleep, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> 10 seconds. Next one's bottoms up, hand release push-ups. I want people to see the gym for what it is. Yo, jackknife, jackknife, jackknife. Go, go, go. Nice and fast. The person that comes in and learns about martial arts and gets into it and just does it because they have a massive interest in it and they want to be healthy and they want a great mentality and they want to surround themselves around positive people can share the same environment as an Israel Adesanya or a Dan Hawker. I want them to see that they are actually the same people. Martial arts, to a big degree, is not exclusive. It's for everybody. It's not for Israel. It's not for the rich and elite. It's not just for the poor. It's not for the middle class. Jim. Double Jim. And gyms are built around that. Jim. They don't segregate the professionals in the same way that other sports do. And no other sport at this level could I or me or you go and decide to have a training run with the All Blacks? That's martial arts. We're all seen as being on the same level. Come on, come on, come on. Push yourself to keep doing reps. Just coming in here and being in amongst the gym surrounded by the coach, Eugene, and all the other professional fighters that take us through the training. It's really exciting because you're getting taught something from people that live this. When I asked my fiance what she thought in the falls to try the Wimpy Warrior and have a fight at the end, and she just looked at me. <laughs> she goes, are you serious? Technical side is cool just because I like to learn heaps of new things. Whatever it is, I'll give it a crack, even if it's new to me. And then, you know, if it really intrigues me, then I'll be more excited to just get in there and just try it. I grew up out in uh, East Auckland and GI, trying something new this year. Get out of the comfort zone. 
my mum was kind of just like, what the hell are you doing, boy? <laughs> In her words, what, are you, what the hell are you doing, boy? And I was like, oh, come on, man. And my fiance and my family, they're fully supportive, but they're just like, why the hell would you go and have a fight? Like, they're just like, it's violent, blah, blah, blah. Quite physical on the body. You will see it on TV, you see the whole UFC, and you're like, what are they doing? They're just laying on each other, come on, get up. It's not as easy as that. <laughs> I like that, makes you think, really. And it's like a game of chess. As long as you're one step ahead, then you can solve the situation. Right now, I'm feeling excited. I'm closer. I'm gonna put my underhook under the dog's armpit and grab his shoulder. With my overhook, I'm gonna grab the tricep. She's gonna do the same. She's gonna hide her head away. I'm gonna hide my head away because I'm not allowed to punch the back of the head. So this is a relatively safe position, but it's also like an equal position. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my hand through this side. I can't put my arm through here unless I make some space. So if she's holding me tight enough. As I go to get in, I have to make a bit of space and make space for my opponent. My opponent goes in at the same time. And then now our feet change as well. So I come in with the back of my hand, she goes in, and we do this as a drill, we just flow. Boom. Okay, let's go away and completely fuck that up and then we'll come back and fix it. Okay, one, two. trainers they just they know you like you turn up every single morning they see you every single day you can tell the coaches are here to help us you know they're not just like this is my job like who wants to get up at 5 a.m to come to their work like these guys are really invested in us so just i guess out of respect we put in that same effort back and i'm learning heaps obviously okay so this is very important that you don't flare your forearms out and let them come underneath that's how the position works it is hard to learn and we just drill things over and over and over until we get it. It's very reassuring that none of us really knew what we were doing. I mean, a couple of people are from City Kickboxing, I think, and they're like, they just kind of help you along. They're like, oh, if you're worried about this thing, go talk to this person. And I'm like, oh, okay, good. Good that I talked to you. Good that you know that. Yeah. We'll start with the basic drill that we've kind of been going over. We'll start with one, two down here. Roll down this side, peel around, and then start again. I've always watched UFC, I quite like it. Being a bit of a McGregor fan myself and my family, but um, I've never done anything like this before. Hands up! Done a little bit of mountain biking, but nothing like um, combat sports. I've always wanted to do something like this, but being afraid that what happens if I get hurt? That's always stuck in the back of my mind, but since I've started it, it's like, man, this is awesome. The left hand goes, follows the, follows the leg. Yeah, put your arm there. It's nothing like going to the gym and you're running and you're doing weights. This technical aspect is awesome, mate, eh? because you're always learning something different and it's motivating as well, because you just want to get better and better. And also, you know you've got to fight later on, so you need to get better. Good, good, very good. Everybody's doing really good. So I've got a wife and two amazing kids. Um, my wife thinks it's fantastic I'm on this journey, but she doesn't know about the fight yet because she doesn't want me getting hurt, so I need to figure out how I'm going to sell it to her. Okay, guys, um, that, was, um, that was the first week done. That was an excellent week. I'm very pleased with all you guys and the way you guys learned, the way you guys picked up stuff. Start to be a bit more conscientious of what you're eating and stuff. There's no point in doing all this training and just going home and eating junk. You should be starting to lose weight now. It's good on first week as I've seen amongst um, all the seasons that I've coached, so yeah, I was pretty happy. The main difference with this year is like, I just think it's such a massive group. Like the biggest group we had was 70 and this year we've got just over 100. It's interesting that even over a week, 
that you see quite a drastic change in their confidence and attitude. Yeah, yeah. Those first day they come in, they're really apprehensive and they don't want to come forth and they're a little bit unsure. But then as they learn the techniques and stuff and they get to know each other just a little bit more, that apprehensiveness gets replaced with enthusiasm and you can see they're kind of a little bit excited to get into it. Chaos, chaos, chaos. Is it getting easier to get up? No. <laughs> Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.